Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Today I thought we'd have a bit of a talk about breeding fish and particularly maybe you've already got fry in your tank or you're looking to breed your fish then you'll know that one of the first things you really need to think about is what you're going to feed them when they first hatch out. And today I thought we'd have a look at these. These are Hikari First Bites which is what I'm using at the moment for my Celestial Pearl Danio fry. First of all, what are Hikari First Bites? First Bites are a very, very finely ground fish meal blend that's in a portion size so minute even the tiniest of little fry are able to feed on it. You can use it for larger fry as well, those of live bearers for example, but to me it really is made for the egg scattering species, the ones that tend to have the absolute teeny weeniest fry. As you can see, these are my celestial fry and these guys at the moment are between two and four days old. So they're still really, really young and really, really small. They're about four millimeters from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail. And yet, despite being so small, they are able to feed on the first bites as soon as they're ready, which is pretty much as soon as they've absorbed their yolk sac and they're now free swimming around the tank. These Hikari first bites have everything you would expect from a food that's made for tiny fry. It's got a nice high protein content at 48% and it contains all the micronutrients and all of the amino acids and everything that a fry needs in order to grow nice and strongly. What's special about them to me is how they actually work. So there are two common methods deployed when using Hikari first bites. The first is to mix the bites with water and then use a pipette or something to transfer it to the tank. Personally, I don't do this because I never have enough fry at any one time and it would be incredibly wasteful to do so. Instead, what I do is I dip the tip of one finger just into the bites, just the very tip of it, so I've got a teeny weeny amount of food on the end of my finger, and then I dip that straight into the tank just above where the fry are hanging out. The bites will then start to sink, and this is where the good bit comes in. The larger pieces, which the fry wouldn't be interested in, just fall down to the bottom, from where my greedy shrimp will happily hoover them up, but the smaller pieces will remain free floating in the water. They will sink eventually, but it takes quite a long time. And so even your shyest fry will have time to come over and investigate the food before they eat it. A lot of other foods I tend to find that they sink far too quickly or they disperse too quickly. So the fry never sort of spot them and come over and have a look. I tend to find with shyer species, like with celestial pearl danios or any of the micro rasboras, anything like that where the fry are really small, they seem to want to look at the food from a distance for a while before they'll come over and then they'll come and eat it. So they need to have that extra time. Obviously as well, you should only feed Hikari bites with the filter switched off. The last thing you want is for them all to be blown away in the current and then your fry won't have time to feed on them. And so I would switch the filter off during this time and having it off for a few hours really won't do the fry any harm at all. How often you need to feed them to your fry depends on your setup. So as you can see, I like to raise very small batches of fry in a mature planted tank and it is teeming with microscopic bits of floating algae and microorganisms and all sorts of little bits and pieces in there that the fry can be snacking on in between meals. And so I'm happy to feed mine with the bites just twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, knowing that they have plenty of food in there that they can be eating on during the meantime. They're not going to go hungry. There's plenty of micro bits and pieces for them. If you're raising fry in a barren tank, on the other hand, so one that's just bare glass or just a few rocks at the bottom, then you're going to be want to be feeding them at least four to five times a day. That way you can maximize their growth rate and you know that they're not getting hungry. And you want to keep them growing fast because while they're this small, they're a bit of a pain to feed. But as they get bigger and they can take things like brine shrimp, little tiny pieces of flake, anything like that, they will grow so much faster and be so much easier to feed. Hikari bites are perfect for just getting past this stage where the fry are so small, it's really hard to give them a more varied diet. I would expect the fry of nano fish to be reliant on something like first bites for the first two weeks of life. Then they should be big enough to start taking larger foods. While Hikari bites certainly aren't the worst for polluting water, you still don't want to be feeding more than your fry will eat within a couple of minutes. What you need to do is you need to watch them while they're feeding, which you should be doing anyway, just to make sure that they're all okay and everybody's getting a share. And then you can adjust how much you feed them accordingly. With a very small number of fry like I have, there's only seven in this tank at the moment, I find it virtually impossible not to overfeed them. Even the tiniest, tiny amount is 
far too much for them at the end of the day. These guys have a stomach that is so small, they're practically full before they even begin. And so what I do is I keep a few shrimp in the tank as well. They're harmless to the fry, but they will eat all of that food that sinks down to the bottom, just so that it doesn't have time to go bad. But the aim of the game is certainly to feed the fry as much as they will take in just one sitting, and then if they need more, increase the number of sittings rather than increasing the amount that you're feeding them. And obviously one of the problems you're going to run into is if fry only need this food for two weeks and you're only feeding such a small amount, it's really unlikely you're going to go through an entire sachet per batch, in which case you might be wanting to store it to use it later on. And Hikari products tend to come in these little resealable bags that are really handy for keeping your food nice and fresh. Or at least they should be. To be honest, I tend to find with first bites because it's so fine, it just gets in the way of the little ziplock, preventing me from closing it properly. And so I keep mine in an airtight tub. In there, I would expect the bites to still be in good condition for the next six months or so. But obviously, make sure you use it before the sell-by date, and if there's any doubt at all, just buy a fresh sachet. It's not like it's particularly expensive, and at the end of the day, the fry, when they're this small, really do need the best quality food to have the best chance of survival. Overall, and in my personal experience, I really like Hikari First Brights when you're trying to feed those very, very small fry. You just need to be a little bit careful to make sure you're not overfeeding them, and that it's not all getting sucked up the filter or something like that. It's absolutely ideal while they're teeny weeny, although you will want to switch to a larger food as they grow, just to make sure that they're getting a nice varied diet to keep them in peak health. But it is a fantastic option for those first delicate couple of weeks while they are so minuscule. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, and if you've got any experience at all working with Hikari products, I'd love to know what you think about them. Uh, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Happy fish keeping, everyone, and I will see you soon. Take care now. Bye! Thank you.